are coming. Hello, everybody. I'm Mario Linares, and this is the Sips of Science. This is episode 20, and we're getting really close to the big show to Sips to Sustainable Inter uh, Industrial Processing Summit that will take place in Phuket from the 27th of November to the 1st of December. And today we're going to be talking about the Alario Franco uh, International Symposium on Solid State Chemistry. And well, I have the honor of having uh, today Dr. Rodrigo Martins. And with me, we are going to have also uh, Dr. Florian Congoli. So we are going right to the show. We'd like to start uh, to ask you to just leave a like here on the video leave your comments, and uh, it's very important to have you with us. Thank you very much for your audience. Hi, everybody. I'm back. I'm Mario Linares, and I have the honor of having uh, with me here Dr. Florian Congoli on my right from Montreal. Hello, Dr. Florian. I, I believe now hello, it's a hello, little hello. earlier in Montreal than usual. What time is it there? It's 5 p.m., 15 degrees Celsius. 5 p.m., 15 degrees Celsius. I'm speaking from Cabo Frio in the state of Rio de Janeiro. Here, uh, the temperature is 24 degrees, and I've got uh, Dr. Uh, Rodrigo Martins. Hello, doctor. Where are you speaking Hello. from? I'm speaking from Lisbon, so 22.5. Very uh, good. Degrees centigrade. Very good. So uh, what time is it in Lisbon right now? 22. 22. So it's 10 p.m. in Lisbon. It's 5 yes. p.m. in Montreal and 7 p.m. here in Brazil in the coast of Rio de Janeiro. Well, we are going to be talking, as I said, about uh, the Alario Franco International Symposium on solid state chemistry for applications and sustainable development. And I have the honor of having two great specialists here because Dr. Florin Congoli uh, has a PhD in materials, chemistry and materials, right, Dr. Florin? Mm -hmm. Dr. Florin? Yes, 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 correct. I hear you. Yes. You hear me? Go ahead. Yes. So. Yes, I, I think I uh, there is a little delay on your uh, on your uh, on your voice. Can you hear me well, Doctor Florian? I hear you very well. I hear you very, very well. Good. So I was confirming you have a PhD on chem uh, chemistry and materials, right? Yes, exactly. Yes. Exactly. So and. Uh, you are the chair, and, and Dr. Uh, Rodrigo is the co-chair of the event. But before we start about the symposium, I would like to talk to SIPS specifically. So we are 17 days away from SIPS, Dr. Florian. What, mm -hmm. uh, what can we expect from the largest event in sustainability through science and technology in the world? Well, um, you know, the SIPS, Sustainability through science and technology, or um, Sustainable Industrial Processing Summit, follows the uh, Flogen Sustainability Framework. So uh, yeah, many people know about this already, but uh, basically it is a new definition of sustainability framework because it used to become so uh, confused in literature the concept in 1992 when it was um, uh, defined for the first time in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, nobody knew about this. Now it's become popular, but everybody is putting in the definition everything they hold dear. Nothing wrong with that. Everybody can have some, some, uh, you know, some passion, and he wants to include the definition of sustainability. But uh, we are putting pears and, and apples in one basket, and this way uh, the definition became so com uh, confusing, and nobody, uh, you know, know knows what's what's really sustainability is about. Why? Because the criteria with actors with goals were mixed up together in one basket without any any criteria. So uh, that's why we divide it. We divide the criteria with actors and pillars. So uh, again, sustainability, it is a simultaneous achievement of three things. It's very important, the word simultaneous. If we forget one, forget about the others, we are not sustainable. So 
uh, if we take care of uh, about environment only and forget about the quality of human life and forget about the economic growth, we are not sustainable. If we deal only with economic growth and we forget about the quality of life of people and environmental protection, we are not sustainable, and so on. So, in order to be sustainable, we have to fulfill the three criteria at the same time. But again, these are only three criteria. The actors are totally different. The actors are not part of the definition. The actors are uh, some, some, you know, uh, factors uh, that can hinder or help sustainability. And we simplify it in three. And in all these three factors or actors are included everything you have in life. So, but they are equally important, but there is also, and is an order of precedence also. So first of all, for us is science and technology. This is the first actor the first goal the first pillar of sustainability and if you, as you see there it's a table of three pillars so anyone goes down the whole structure goes down but you have to start from science and technology because science and technology give solutions then the equally important pillars is governance and management why because you know you have to create the the right legal political framework to develop the science to find the solution and to manage things however Government without science has very uh, limited possibilities. So the whole thing, or anything they can do is just, uh, you know, um, cut the energy used like they are doing in Germany now, or cut the water, or cut uh, the plastic bags, which are good things. Are nothing. I'm not against them. But the reach is very limited. The efficiency and is very limited because only science gives the solution. Government role to achieve sustainability without science, forget it. Uh, on the other side, the equally important uh, pillar, it is uh, uh, education. It is education and civil society. We need uh, that to prepare the, uh, the future scientists and engineers to achieve sustainability. So there are three equally important pillars or actors. They have to cooperate each other, are equally important. Any one of those goes down, the whole structure goes down, and we, uh, we don't even have sustainability. But the order of precedent is science and technology because it gives solutions. Now here, Professor Rodrigo has, has dealt with all his life with materials, with electronic and materials. So basically he falls in, 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 those, three, uh, in those three pillars. First, he is, um, he, he is a research, uh, he, is a, um, he, he does research on a regular basis, so he's science and technology. Uh, second, he is a, a professor university, preparing, so he's an education pillar prepare the young generation in science and technology. But on the other side, he has been dealing with governance, not in the political side yet, probably, but, uh, but on, the, on the society, on the scientific society level. He has been president of European, um, uh, European, uh, European uh, Science uh, um, uh, Academy uh, and in various different organizations. So he is a representative of these three pillars equally important pillars of sustainability. And now, uh, why we're speaking about materials and properties and, uh, you know, um, you know, solid state chemistry is a very general concept. It includes everything. As long as it's solid, it's not in liquid state. And it includes everything, electronics, like Professor Rodrigo's specialty. It includes all sorts of materials. It includes uh, many, many things. The key point is, the key point is that, uh, you know, the in order to have any, any, anything today. You have, you have to have rockets to go to a different planet. You have to have a car that there are lies spend less energy. You have electronics that spend less energy. That is special deal, Professor Rodrigo's, uh, Rodrigo. So, um, you know, Rodrigo Martin. So, you know, are uh, these new materials, this, the, the properties of new materials come from the structure, from the, uh, you know, molecular structure, from uh, electronic structure. Uh, and you name it. So properties follow the structure, um, but has not been uh, seen yet as a has not been seen yet as a as a uh, in a sustainability in a sustainability you know of, uh, in a sustainability point of view. Uh, for example, just short, uh, we have included the concept of sustainability in the in the para, in the material science uh, in the paradigm of material science. Uh, for example, prior to that, if you can see, I think you have uh, some graphs there. Uh, 
the, uh, there was a link between uh, central paradigm of material science and engineering. So as it was defined in 1997, it's from, you, you see, you have a processing, you have structure, you have properties, and then you have performance. And this here was missing a link. So that was good, but it was missing a link, the sustainability link. And then we developed it further. Processing, structure, property, performance, and recyclability or reutilization. We developed this in 2012. So we called it Modified Central Paradigm of Material Science and Engineering. And if you go to the other one, you can see so this use is a very useful one from Olson. Uh, you can see here that the, very, the properties uh, and performance are very closely related. You can go for goals and meaning, and you can go from cause and effect in a different uh, in a different direction. So you link property structure, proper, uh, uh, proce processing structure, properties, and performance. But still, is a missing link here. And what it is is the sustainability link or recycling, uh, the recycling and re reutilization that you have it in the. So this is our modified central paradigm of material science engineering. It's a circle. So here, the, what is included here, it is recyclability and reuse. So this is the link, the sustainability link that we included. Now, Professor uh, Professor Rodrigo Martins has dealt all his life uh, uh, with material science and engineering. So he might speak better with it. Probably this definition has been already, he has been using it without even defining it, but I, I'm pretty sure. Uh, because has been uh, all his life. And I remember his presentation at SIPS 2014 in Cancun, Mexico, uh, that was dedicated to uh, uh, to Dan Shetman, Nobel laureate in chemistry. He, he was one of the best in exactly in this point of view, in the role of materials in the world. So that's, that's up uh, for me. And I leave the word to Professor Martin. As you're saying, Dr. Florian, it's a, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Dr. Rodrigo Martins. Uh, it's a pleasure of having you here, really, especially because uh, we speak the same language, Portuguese. You, you are in Lisbon. Uh, the accent is a little different for the ones who, who don't know, <laughs> but it's a great honor to have a, 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 such a relevant scientist in our program today. So before we start, I'd like to... To, to introduce our guest tonight. Rodrigo Martins is a full professor in Materials Science Department of Faculty of Science and Technology of the New University of Lisbon, a fellow of the Portuguese Engineering Academy since 20, uh, 2009, and a member of the European Academy of Science since 2016. He was decorated with the Gold Medal of Merit and Distinction by the Almada Municipality, uh, municipality for his R&D achievements. Currently, he is the director of the Center of Excellence in Microelectronics and Optoelectronics Processes of the Institute of New Technologies, CIMO Uninova, and the head of Group of Materials for Electronics, Optoelectronics, and Nanotechnologies, MION of CINIMAT, EN, president of the European Academy of Sciences, member of the advisory board of Horizons 2020 on DG Research and Innovation, and Chair of the European Committee uh, Affairs of European Materials Research Society, Chair of the Global Leadership and Service Award, and there's much more. If I keep reading here, we are going to be like an hour speaking. So the full bio is here on the link underneath. So thank you very much, Dr. Rodrigo, for being here with us and for talking with us about the Alario Franco International uh, Symposium on Solid State Chemistry. Good evening. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. So good evening also to all of you. And of course, I'm very aligned with uh, what uh, I, we just heard uh, from Professor Forlan. Uh, indeed, uh, uh, I just would like to add something. I'm also the current president of the International Union of Material Research Society, so, which is um, a, a, a global association that involves 14 societies spread over all the world, so in, uh, in Europe, in Brazil. My vice president is uh, from Brazil, from uh, Sao Paulo, not from Rio de Janeiro. And he, he, he may become the next president two years from now. But anyhow, uh, what is very important, just to summarize, is that whatever the progress that you make, whatever the field where you are involved, 
the activator and the accelerator of the transformations that we have in the world are the materials. And they are really the ones that are the basis for making all the, the transformations that we want. And as Professor Forlan said, for the welfare and comfort of the people. So science must be for something. And I used to say that there are no party of science and technology without materials because materials are everywhere and we need for all the type of transformation. So what we are speaking here is how we can make it things happen. We have been living so far until today in a open loop perspectives as far as science is concerned. So we try to see how beautiful science is made and we don't care about what are the impacts of what we are doing and developing. Just a very simple example that I can give you. All the electronics that we are using today, they are based on this silicon technology. Silicon is the most abundant material. It's the fantastic material. It's the king of the kings, and we need it. Why? Because for all this type of interfaces and communications that we need to make, we need the electronics. So the interfaces that are between us and whatever we want, are we need an, inter, an electronic interface. And this is, by sure, based on silicon. And so what we have to create is just to have this scenario. When we speak about sustainability, sustainability means that what I'm trying to do is to process materials and not in a open loop. So not exploiting and try to take profit of them. And that's it. And then you put it in the landfill, whatever you want. So we create and regenerate what we call this electronic waste. And this electronic waste, what has been happening so far is that we export it. And as soon as we get more, more people with more comfort, larger and larger will be the amount of, of electronic waste that we, we are producing. Therefore, it means that we are in a deadlock. And if the materials, as Professor Forland said, are not recyclable, which means that if I cannot, or the technology that I use are, are, ex, are very expensive, this means that I'm in a, a deadlock. And when we speak in silicon, to make silicon happen, to dope the, the silicon, what we need, um, we need to have very high temperatures, 1200 degrees centigrade. And moreover, to dope, to control the, pro the properties of the, the silicon, we need to have a very specific environment. So we need to use a clean room facilities uh, and also very, very aggressive gases like phosphine or diborane. They are very, very toxic and also very, very explosive. So it means that this is, this is what we say not sustainable. Why? Because not only because they are putting in danger our planet, but because not all pe uh, uh, the technology is not available for uh, all the people. So I'm speaking about uh, um, Brazil with all the respect that I have uh, by Brazil. I have to, to say that the first clean room that was installed in Brazil, it was in the, in the 80s through our RCA and it was in Sao Paulo. And because it's quite expensive, the costs related. Now you have several ones uh, spread over all the, the Brazil, but they are very expensive. And moreover, I cannot recycle the, the, uh, the silicon. The technology is not affordable for all. When we say about sustainability, we are speaking about globalization, not only with the impact that we must have on, on, uh, on, the, on the things that we are producing, but also on the cost of the technology. And as, as I told you, uh, I'm using a material that is, is very abundant. It's the most abundant material in, in the earth, but very hard to be recycled. And moreover, to process, I have to use very high temperatures. This means that I have to use very high energy. So when we speak also in sustainability, it's not, uh, it's, we have to look about technologies. And these te technologies must be affordable and very easy to be done. So we must migrate from physical-based process to chemical-based process, synthesis of materials. And moreover, of course, as we have a scarcity of materials and because we want to give, as Professor Forlan said, comfort to all, it means that I, I will use and exploit more and more materials. This is, this is absolutely normal because uh, uh, the, 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 the paradigm that we have today is how we can fill the, as, the ambitions of the people in the Asia, in China, in Brazil, uh, in Africa. Why? And this is not just for uh, elite. This is for 
all the people. So you must have how we can make it happen for all the people. And in, in this respect, it means that we have to look for technologies with much less energy. And mm -hmm. moreover, I need also to reduce the amount of materials that I use. So I have to go for a nanoscale because I will, re I will reduce the amount of material because if I na a nanoscale, I can make a, uh, something, a device that is the same specifications at a micro scale, mm -hmm. I will reduce by more than three orders of magnitude the amount of material that I need for this. And therefore, I'm, this is sustainability because I'm reducing the amount and making the same comfort. It's not killing the things. It's not just as uh, some people said, okay, now we go for the, we go 1,000 years uh, below. No, no, we have to keep the same, the same standards of life and try mm -hmm. to exploit. And this is why chemi chemical is very, very important, how the synthesis of material is very important because this is affordable. Is, and, and we try to mimic the nature. So when I try to mimic the nature and, uh, and to synthesize this material, this is very important. And uh, mm -hmm. this is why uh, uh, solid state chemistry is so important because I cannot only synthesize uh, new materials using very low technologies, affordable for all the people, but also because I have another, an, another very key goal is that the amount of energy that I will use is by far different. And I can also modify, I can design the materials of the future. And this means that I can go from the complexity that I have in a policy, in an integrated circuit, and I make it this complexity simpler if I can exploit better the performances of materials. I can use all the all the all type of materials. For instance, if I if I burn the surface of, of, of a paper, I can uh -huh. make graphene. And so if I can control the way how I burn it, this means that this graphene is very good conductor and I can make and design the circuits on paper. And and Paper is, is a millionaire material that I can recycle and I can reuse and reutilize whatever I want. And in this respect, it means that we, we have to open a, a landscape, a new landscape where we can make it this. And I am very proud to be a friend of uh, Hilario. He is a fellow of my academy. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud because the Nobel Prize this year in chemistry is, is um, a fellow of my academy. And I mm -hmm. have the, also the fellow of the European Research Council. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I used to be a member, I'm a former member of the Scientific Council of the European mm -hmm. Research Council. It's the best scientific council in the world because we try to look for talents, whatever they are. We don't look for the nationalities, but we want to bring them to Europe. And, Very good. And we are looking for this type of, of, mm -hmm. of approaches. And Professor um, Hilario, that also was a former president of the um, Real Academy of Spain, Mm -hmm. is now a member of uh, the European Academy of Science. Yes. He has been devoted all his life to this type of chemistry, synthesized new materials, uh, and uh, trying to see what is the pathway for the future. And moreover, mm -hmm. he also has had a very fantastic action as far as education is concerned in Spain that also impact in the European strategy. I have just to say that Iran in the past, uh, Iran in the past for, mm -hmm. for a position for to be director of the of the Spanish university, so he's someone that is really involved on the Very good. on uh, how bring science close uh -huh. uh, to edu education because we need these transformations. And what Professor Forlan said is that we need uh, uh, why we need this pilot of ed education because if you are looking for a strategy of the future, you know the typical at the universities as I am uh, mm -hmm. working uh, today, they are. The, they are very essential because uh, in, in the past, the idea is to, get, to give the flexibility to us, to our mentality, and to think to the challenges of the future. So that is quite conventional. And you yes. have the, the pillars of, of, of education, physics, chemistry, and mathematics. And this gives you the flexibility to think and to think and to, 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 to act. But today, there are a, another dimension that it was said on the pillars that Professor Ferran said, is how I can take profit of what I'm uh, discovering, what I'm de uh, developing. So this is the entrepreneur spirit that we have. This is something that uh, uh, the Americans have a lot. Uh, the Europeans don't have too much. 
this type of spirit. But this is something that we need to, to know. And also to prepare the people, not to take profit of what they are discovering, uh -huh. but also to, to change the mindset. Because if, you, if, you, if you, we are so progress as far as science is concerned, this means that we are beyond what is conventional and traditional at university. So you must also, on this sustainable concept that I agree with what Professor Berlin said, we have to go further. And this means that we have to educate on the frontiers of knowledge. And of course, uh, uh, as, as we are looking for science, for mm -hmm. something, science for an, an application for the comfort of the people, it means that also this will impact on the governance structure. Why? Because they must decide it based on scientific evidence and mm -hmm. not for political reasons only. It's because when when we take a, a position, it's very imp important. Of, of course, pol politicians exactly. are, are important. Exactly. You have had the elections now. Uh, mm -hmm. two weeks ago or something like that. But yes. the point is that the decisions that they have to make is to take as a first as a first step how they will impact on the citizens, how they will impact on the prosperity, how mm -hmm. they will impact on the comfort. And this is to be made not because I want to make money, too much money, as Professor Forlan said, but because this will really be relevant for a, a strategy of comfort for that uh, all will benefit from this. So it exactly. is very important to look for all this type of, of uh, approaches that we can have um, in, the, in the world. And I believe that uh, mm -hmm. we are moving on this, on this direction in Europe. <clears throat> we are creating okay. uh -huh. conditions for this. And uh, I'm very proud that uh, uh, to, to honor someone that uh, is been um, devoting to to in an outstanding manner for all this uh, actions very good the the synthesis of material and that that's that's mm -hmm. it that i believe that it, it will be an exit a very mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a very important uh, event and mm -hmm. uh, i just uh, Excellent, oh, excellent, excellent. Dr. Florian, uh, basically, among other things, uh, Dr. Rodrigo Martins went through in a very detailed way in the sustainability framework. I mean, all the aspects of the sustainability framework. And then I get uh, to one point that you always say, somebody one day decided to divide science in many, in many aspects. But... Uh, this only made things more difficult because, as he himself said, and you've said many times, you get mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, I mean, everything together. You have uh, science and medicine. Medicine is not science. So, I mean, SIPs, what is the magic of doing this, of getting all of them together in 50 symposia, over 50 symposia, yeah. that have a 360 degrees uh, approach on, on science? I mean, from the, the aspect of physics, of mathematics. I mean, everybody together talking about science, finding a way, looking for a way for sustainability. Is that the magic of SIPS? I guess so. You mentioned it, Professor Martin also mentioned that. So, uh, uh, you know, you, you, have, you have a physical use of uh, silica, so you have to, to, to explore a chemical uh, uh, chemical uh, processing of silica for recycling. Uh, you need mathematics for modeling. Uh, so this is just uh, uh, some part of the things. But uh, you know, um, because of ignorance, that is always has been my theory. We divide science in different uh, in different you know fields or even subfields. For example, uh, in organic uh, chemistry with organic chemistry. So they went apart. Uh, for a long time, uh, physics went apart from chemistry for uh, for centuries, and uh, there, there have been so many. Medicine went apart. So today we have Academy of Medicine and Academy of Sciences. So the only names means that uh, you know one of them is not the other. For example, medicine is not science, and science is not medicine, which doesn't make sense. So. Uh, that's why SIPS brings together uh, about 50 international symposia in specific different fields. 
but bringing them they are separately they go um, in separate fields there's a separate symposium like uh, solid state chemistry but we are in the same roof with a symposium of mathematics a symposium of chemistry symposium of of processing of um, starting from mining because 360 degrees we start from geology mining mineral processing you know um, uh, metal extraction metal refining new materials advanced materials nanomaterials nanotechnology smart materials intelligent materials you name it uh, and why medicine is there because today medicine is not uh, uh, it cannot be uh, you know uh, uh, it, it cannot function without materials new technologies it's and also electronics that Professor Martins mentioned that is his specialty. So there is no modern medicine today. 90% of medicine today comes from physics, chemistry, IT, electronics, etc. So that's why this year we have three, three very successful medical related symposia, oxidative stress, um, new technologies in medicine and COVID, um, uh, uh, COVID uh, related issues and what can we do in the future so these are all in the same roof and this is the 60 degrees that's the magic of SIPS and that's that's where where new cooperation project between different field of science between different countries between different disciplines are you know in send um, are uh, started SIPS are started SIPS why because uh, you know they are in the, in the same field and the real life is multi-dimensional there is no only chemistry physics uh, apart so we don't think it this way but as i mentioned previously if we send a, a person in a different planet we have to think and manage all these different aspects starting from minerals analyzing the minerals testing the minerals um, materials properties developing new materials with sending the heat electronics for communication uh, and, and legal aspect that's why you have a legal symposium dedicated to a famous uh, Washington DC lawyer this time uh, in Phuket uh, you have to deal uh, you know the, the governments uh, uh, it's by by the way government and law is always one step behind science they but they are important because they determine the framework political and legal framework in order science not to be used in the wrong direction against hum humanity like has been using in the past for example Nobel um, uh, you know Alfred Nobel uh, in, uh, uh, developed the dynamite for mining, but it was used for the uh, as, a, as an explosive in the world. So science, scientific development can be used for good and for bad. But uh, is a framework from uh, government and, and legal. That's why you have them all in six. So uh, in, in one roof, 360 degrees, and uh, and this creates those conditions that when we say normally. In order to succeed in science, you have to fail 10 times and you can succeed in the 11th time, which is actually is not a failure, but uh, that's the expression. Uh, by being in contact with him, so, so many different people of the very different disciplines, the chances are that instead of trying 10 times and succeed on the 11th time, you can try less five times and succeed on the sixth because you have the input of so many people like Professor Martins that have been uh, Professor Martin is really unique to tell the truth because he is uh, so active in all these societies, in all this uh, academy of science, uh, you know, and this is, he has, uh, that's why I mentioned the three pillars he is in all of them, government and management because of this, um, uh, you know, very uh, involved in various societies and various government bodies, uh, not in politics though, not yet probably. But I think his wife is going to go in politics. So uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the education, he, he educates the young generation. And at the first, the foremost, he is a researcher uh, developing new materials and new technologies for the... For the... So this is that's basically SIPS, that's the magic of SIPS uh, to, to, uh, to respond to your question was the magic. So basically everything falls in this uh, definition for sustainability framework. Everything falls there, legal falls there, um, you know, uh, you name it. The, or it is a, the criteria are three pillars are very concise. Science and technology includes everything. Uh, we, we need to go, we need to, go to, to develop new things. We have to develop to, to pass the frontiers, as Professor Martin said, all the time. Otherwise, we don't have new science and technology. 
science and technology is is pushing the frontiers ahead. But also we have to have the governance and management in order to 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 make sure that the achievement in science are not used against humanity, which is our three criteria: it's environmental protection, social development, quality of human of human life and also economic development. So they have both because they help each other. So that's why it's important this symposium and it's important of having Professor Martins because he's a synthesis of these three pillars. Very good. Now, uh, before we, we, we continue, we were talking about uh, the importance of the Academy of Science and Technology. And I would like to show a video here of why, uh, Nobel, uh, why Nobel laureates participate of, not before Nobel laureates, why academics participate of, of SIPs. And then I'm going to show another video specifically about Nobel laureates, okay? They combine science, engineering, and fun. Here they talk science, they talk engineering, they talk technology. And indeed the very relations between the science, the engineers, and the politicians. That is a framework which is absolutely essential. It's very important for me to understand how interact, let's say, the science with the sustainability and the social responsibility. What I really enjoy about the SIPS conferences is that they bring scientists from every discipline together. And we always have a plenary speakers that are all Nobel Prize winners. And so it's very nice for even the youngest scientists starting out to, to hear a lecture by such figures. It's very inspiring. Où on trouve simultanément des vrais scientifiques, simultanément des vrais ingénieurs et simultanément des vrais entrepreneurs. Et c'est des mondes qui ne se rencontrent pas normalement, malheureusement. Là, le fait que L'organisation de SIPS permet de discuter, de comprendre les problèmes de l'autre et peut-être d'avoir une solution ou simplement de mieux comprendre pour le futur, c'est important. SIPS is an outstanding uh, organization. It's an outstanding family and it's very unique. There is no other one that I know of like this. It has been very, very useful in establishing very successful collaborations. I think that one of the things that people enjoy the most is the ability to interact with each other, to learn from each other. And uh, I think that that's a very important part of your conference is for them to be able to learn each other's expertise and each other's opinions. I need to say my general impression is uh, very nice. Uh, I was surprised how many, how many people, how many important people came here, how many people arrived. I've been to quite a lot of presentations, seen presentations from different fields, from law to chemistry. I have good impression and I'm impressed. <laughs> the companies and the universities collaboration is, a, this is a necessary condition to improve for future development of the technology. I think that we will have a, a, a big contribution for the community that must be completely involved with these topics. I congratulate you with the Frog and uh, Technology for this event. High level congratulations for this initiative. Yeah, I have a very good impression. So it's a very nice combination between uh, general presentations by inviting uh, really uh, significant experts, not only Nobel Prize winners, but also very important and famous scientists to the plenary lectures. The impression this is a good way to um, emphasize research on sustainability, energy resources, and find methods to save energy or even techniques to renew the energy. Sorry, my, my mic was. Uh, okay. There is a lot more video. I'm going to leave the full link, the link here to watch the full video. But uh, we saw many colleagues of yours, uh, Dr. Rodrigo, many academics talking about SIPs, an event that has been happening since uh, 2003 and that has gone all over the world. Uh, Dr. Florin, uh, correct me, but Turkey, China, Mexico, Brazil, uh, Cyprus, Thailand, I mean, an infinity of, of countries and always people from different backgrounds, people from different uh, realities, from different structures, different, uh, I mean, 
a diversity, it was said in one of these programs, a diversity of scientists exchanging ideas. Uh, how good, I mean, what is the difference that this makes in the, the uh, creation and uh, the creativity process, in the scientific process, Dr. Rodrigo? I think this is a good opportunity because, uh, as it was pointed out, uh, we, we, we cannot uh, live in an uh, isolated uh, cluster. So uh, it means that we have to uh, interpenetrate with other ideas and with other concepts, with other mm -hmm. disciplines. And this is uh, a, a moment where we can make science networking uh, uh, aiming to impact further in what we are doing. In, in order that I will see always the, the bottle uh, not uh, uh, full, emp uh, not empty, but also trying to make it full with the new ideas and the new concepts. And this is also, also very important. When you cross synergies, it means that you don't see the image always with the same height that a, med uh, a doctor uh, saw the same or a physics saw or um, electronics engineering is also when you have this networking of science of high level networking science that aims to express the best that we have you 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 gain because you you see the same image but re, uh, treated in different ways a doctor for instance see and takes profit how i can use the materials or um, for um, therapy applications or um, I can see, for instance, how I can create new, new new strategies when we speak about substitution of critical materials, how I can substitute silicon by, for instance, metal oxide or organic semiconductors that make the same uh, the, the same performance as in the past, you uh, expending much less energy or in much less money to make the same. So on these aspects, I have to cross-cutting engineering um, uh, thinking uh, and also to basic science and also with the prospects for the future without um, uh, uh, forgetting the social impact so humanities aspect of course we have to respect the law <laughs> whatever we do and th this is the type of mix that we need for the future this type of cross fields cross fertilization networking on science at high level this is what i think uh, uh, Professor Forlan aims to promote, and this is positive when we hear, hear things from different aspects. So uh, this is very important. Very good, Dr. Florian. We are 17 days away from SIPS, and uh, I usually say that that P stands for par uh, for paradise. Yes, you always choose all these editions of SIPS since 2003 were held in beautiful places. I mean, and besides being beautiful, very practical, very, very uh, uh, practical, and very focused on results. Yes, you really work. Sometimes I was even talking these days that uh, we go to a place like this and we don't have time to go to the beach. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, I would like to show before you, you you make a comment on that. I want to show where. Uh, SIPS is going to take place. SIPS in the 50 Symposia, the Hilton Phuket Arcadia, a magnificent hotel like all the other ones. And I want to, you to comment about the the uh, the package. What what can you expect in terms of uh, hospitality and uh, meals and all that? Okay, we'll be right back right after this 30 second video.
So, Dr. Florian, uh, I know that during the, the from the 27th of November to the 1st of December, people will have very little time to go to the beach to, to visit Phuket. But it's a, a paradise. <laughs> okay. Have you prepared anything special for anybody who wants to arrive a little before or stay some days yeah. later? Yeah, yeah, that's all those who do that. Uh, they are, I mean, it's, it's a healthy competition. Uh, going to the swimming pool, going to the beach or staying or uh, staying to the uh, technical sessions and actually most of the people uh, stay to the technical sessions. That's why, because it's so interesting. We have so many interviews. Uh, Jean-Marie Dubois, professor from, uh, from um, uh, you know, in um, Jean, uh, Jean Lamour Institute in France, uh, once said, it's very uh, difficult to convince people that we are working from 7 a.m. in the morning to 11 p.m. at night here in this paradise. Uh, Jean Ricardo, the politician from Brazil, he mentioned that we mind you in the in the gala. I've never been, I've I've not been in swimming pool, I've not been on the beach. I've been following this symposia. Some of them that not already not in the in my field as a doctor, as a medical doctor, but he was interesting to to use those. So. Uh, so this is a healthy competition. That's why we offer people up to five days before and five days after to stay for vacation if they want. Uh, so in order to enjoy uh, both in a sustainable way, both of them, science, technology, develop new ideas and projects, but also enjoy since uh, we choose the best place in the world for science and engineering. And uh, Professor Martinez knows uh, very well. He was our plenary speaker in Cancun 2014. And uh, I remember his lecture was one of a powerful one, actually making the case of uh, materials. And I'm sure he enjoyed uh, uh, Piesa Americana uh, um, Condesa Hotel that we organized there. Um, is this is this is this correct, uh, Professor Martin? Yes, absolutely correct. I I was there with my wife. My wife now is Minister of Science and Technology and Higher Education. I was there with her and um, with my doctor, and we really today still we think about how you could manage to to bring all together. And uh, it yeah. was fantastic because uh, I remember it was during the World Cup football, and so we could uh, drink uh, in Cancun some carpirinhas. Uh, oh, very good. During, uh, in the, in the bar. And we are going in to the be in the World it's... Cup also in, in Phuket. Yeah, yeah. The, the World no, no, Cup is going to start on the 20th. Yeah, but uh, anyhow, I think it, it, it's fantastic, and I believe this is, is something very, very well aligned. Uh, is I have to say that I, I will be during the G7 meeting because the G7 they invited uh, my academy, and I represent the European Academy, mm -hmm. be there. And the, the topic of the of the discussion, of course, they are the most powerful countries in the world but is the one health planet and this is what what is to do with the with, because we don't have planet b and the idea is to see how we can all the decisions that they aim to do they want also to be supported by by science evidence mm -hmm. and they want us to to advise them what could be the best strategy to them Very to good. put and, and to that, and I believe they somehow uh, this type of event aims to bring together uh, an approach similar to this. That is my first approach to G7. I never was there, uh, but uh, I also would like to see how the and this is a great uh, uh, a great conquer from uh, from all of us because it means that the politicians are taking care about what science means for the future. Very good, very good, yeah, that's uh, doctor. A good, that's a good sign. That's a good yeah. sign. <laughs> it is indeed. And Dr. Florian, we were talking today earlier uh, that uh, SIPs, uh, I, I don't know, this is a question I, I've been, uh, I don't know why I haven't asked you this question yet, but how does it feel to have uh, SIPs as a legacy to the world? Because we were talking today earlier on that uh, a project in Brazil that is going to be launched officially at SIPS. Yes, I don't know if I, I could talk about this, but mentioning exactly this uh, sustainability framework that has been developed by Flogen, uh, how it affects 
communities and the echoes of SIPs Rio de Janeiro in 2018. I mean, they're starting to develop even legal, uh, pr practical aspects of laws, thinking of uh, uh, the preservation of the environment. For the ones who don't know, uh, uh, before I ask this question, Brazil has six biomes. Everybody talks about the Amazon in the world, but the Amazon is the best preserved biome. Yes, 92% of, 82% uh, of the Amazon is preserved. Yes, and we have Caatinga, Pantanal, uh, the Pampas, yes, the Cerrado, and also the Atlantic rainforest. In the area of Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo, Minas, yes, this area here, only 10% is preserved, Dr. Florian. And now I've heard that uh, uh, a program, an environmental protection program that is connected to the production of... Uh, agricultural, uh, uh, I mean, of vegetables, green grocers and organic vegetables and all that with the preservation of uh, the, the forest and with the help of the public power was based on your uh, framework. How does it feel, I mean, to have SIPs effective, not only being theory, because you always say 98% of the of science stays at the, the university, at the academia. How does it feel to see this framework, to see a legacy, a sustainable legacy of SIPs really happening and changing the the communities, changing yeah. the society, changing the world. Yes, because SIPs links fundamentals with application. Without application, we don't have sustainability. So it could be it could be a near term, could be a long term, but we try to uh, to shorten the distance. Uh, you know, science sometimes it serves a, uh, a very future generation. In, uh, I mean. Some of the discovery can be used 100 years from now. The issue is that's nothing wrong with that. The issue is that what we are developing today to, to find the application and to serve the society. So SIPS is oriented to our applicability because we have the, uh, that's why sustainability, uh, the sustainable processing summit or sustainability through science and technology. So this is, this is uh, and uh, being so, uh, oriented toward the applicability, but without forgetting basic science, because all are related, all are the two sides of one medal. Uh, so, but the, the question is to pass the, the value of death and to apply them. And then, in this in this point of view, we feel so happy that our sustainability framework is, is being adopted in the real. Why? Because we clarify things. You know, even today you hear politicians. You know. Um, uh, in, it's just, uh, environmental sustainability. It, just, it doesn't make any sense. In environmental sustainability, sustainability, environment, environment is part of sustainability. It's one of the criteria of sustainability. And then they say we we're gonna we uh, we will be based our decision in science. But then when when you go deep, this is just a lip service. Uh, so. Uh, uh, you know, for example, they say, well, what where it was based the decision of Germany to close down all nuclear reactors? They say Germany is the first, you know, it is failure of the whole political class in Germany because the decision was not zero percent based on science because all scientific evidence is against that the nuclear reactors are clean energy. They have only two drawbacks, which is the waste and the risk. But these are man managed by science and. If you saw, should, saw the data, we have been dealing with uh, about this in our energy symposium uh, since uh, you know uh, 10 years now. If they would have heard us, they would not have closed the, uh, the the nuclear reactors. So their decision first was not based on science because we have a full study that there is nothing wrong, even on the risk compared to other forms of energy in nuclear. But on the other side, they ignore the science to give a solution. If there is a problem with waste, the science dealing with it. To, to, to recycle is sustainable. It's a problem with the risk, science deal with it. So it's a failure, it's double failure. So, uh, you know, it's easy to say I base the decision on science, but then uh, you go in the opposite direction. That's what happened with Germany. Besides, uh, there is a very strange in Germany, besides the Green Party. The Green Party in Germany, uh, you know, normally the Green Party are against nuclear reactors, but you know, not, not Reinhard Putikover, the chair of the Green Party. He warned the political class not to close down the nuclear reactor. No, and today everybody agrees. But it was he was alone, and the Green Party in Germany did that. And we are proud to, to uh, that we have honored 
Reinhard Butikofer, the head of the Green Party, with Frey International Sustainability Award in 2011. 11 years be, be, yeah, uh, uh, before. Two programs ago, we talked about it, right? Yes, exactly. To, so to we honored it. We found Professor him, Dodds. Yeah, we found him a uh, leader in sustainability. Mm -hmm. So we honored him 11 years before. And today, everybody accepts that he was the only one, his party, actually. Exactly. It's a little bit strange because the Green Party are against, you know, they are a little bit in, in uh, you know, going against the mm -hmm. nuclear reactors and so on. But not that. It was the only political party that was against and everybody accepts it. Well, not everybody accepts it. The, the, the <laughs> you know, uh, the, the, the wife of, uh, of Professor Martins is not because it's coming from science. But people, the politicians coming from science, sometimes they, they say things, they don't, do not do, do things as it should. You know, and then they say, okay, we are based on science, but they do not follow science. And then, and then when something happens, you know, there is no politician mm -hmm. in Germany coming in to be saying, okay, sorry, we're wrong. They make it like, okay, something well. in the past. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's part of the game. Let's say, it's part but of the game. Co co so. continuing here, uh, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Rodrigo about what we should expect on the symposium. But before that, I will show a, a, a quick video here, uh, thirty-second video also about the symposium itself, about uh, the Alario Franco International Symposium. Okay, and then I, I, I would like you to to answer this, what we should expect in terms of lectures and in terms of uh, scientific uh, works to be presented. So let, let's see the video. You have the wrong one. It's a related advanced materials, but it's not. A, it's not. Oh. A, it's not a Lario Franco. Well, a so Lario Franco. I've got it. You have it. You have it. Yeah, my, my my mistake here. Then uh, you have it. But well, let, let's see what what we have, Do Dr. Rodrigo. What uh, can we talk about the the symposium? Yeah. Okay. As I said before, I believe that it could be a success because the idea. Uh, is to 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 exploit the, the material synthesis uh, where chemistry is the tool that we need to promote all this type of reactions and try to see how they could uh, real impact in different uh, topics in different areas uh, going from from um, transport transportation even how we can synthesis new new reinforcing materials or to the health as it was said also how it will impact on the, the new field and the new era of of green chemistry and also <clears throat> how this could be be beneficiary for the developments and the creativity that we have for the future namely i would uh, it is not only important uh, to other people to discuss but also younger guys to take comfort and in a very nice atmosphere to exchange ideas, to promote concepts and to think how beautiful science is when we really love it. And I believe this could be the, 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 right, the right place where you can discuss. And I hope to all of us that will be there could uh, impact uh, and have all these type of perspectives for the future. So that's the key. That's a, that's just uh, in order to correct my mistake i'm going to show now the alario franco symposium yeah, just okay? before that just a bit okay, what, what professor martin said that science is beautiful when we like it oh no that this is beautiful these are yeah. golden words yeah th th this was th th this is really uh life-changing so j just to show the right video now
now it was the Alario That's Franco. Right, the Alario right, Franco right, symposium. Right. There are 50 symposiums, Dr. Florian, and they look alike <laughs> here in the list. So you yeah, got it well, wrong. we have one. And this you. is what makes it so impressive. Yeah. 50 symposium with 600 of, I mean, some of the greatest minds in the world, I usually say the 600 scientific uh, uh, presentations, uh, scientists, politicians, businessmen, executives from over 80 countries. And in this list, we can we can highlight nine Nobel Prizes. Is it, is it the event in yeah. the world with the highest number of Nobel Prizes, Dr. Rowe? Uh, in, in its category, yes, yeah, sure. It is uh, in, in science and technology, yes. I see. So it is not, uh, it's not, uh, you know, uh, one only, one when it is only a meeting of only Nobel Prizes, different story. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, that's, uh, I think it's a, it's a record. Okay. Well, we are getting to the and to the end of our, uh, our show. I would like to. to but have, you, uh, you have it also the why the Nobel laureates uh, participate. Yeah, yeah. This will be the last the last video I will show. Yeah, okay. Why Nobel okay. laureates participate? But uh, I would like to have your final considerations. Yes, Dr. Florent and uh, uh, Dr. Rodrigo. Yes, but I will start with Dr. Rodrigo. Your final considerations. Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much. Uh, a little over two weeks uh, from SIPS. It's an honor to have you here, and I'm looking forward to meeting you in Phuket. Yeah, I hope that all that will go there, and also the outstanding uh, panelists that will be involved on this event will will be quite relevant to for the advances that we want on science and how we can uh, really have in a in a place where we can exchange ideas. Uh, to create new concepts and also to promote science to the extreme. To go to further, we need the talents, and I believe that this is what uh, you will meet two weeks from now. And uh, uh, I will be thinking that this will be also very fantastic. You can also have, as, as it was said, uh, some relaxed time to see the World Cup on the on the news and see how brazil will will make it or portugal why not <laughs> exactly and <laughs> but, i hope cristiano ronaldo, uh, the, cristiano our score ronaldo. is more on science is yeah. more on science and i believe this is also our game science is our game thank you and the best for all of you very good and i hope cristiano ronaldo is if portugal meet brazil in the world cup cristiano does it does it destroy <laughs> brazil let, let let let's keep it as distant as possible he, he's like uh, a great player so dr florian you're not well you are a karaoke dr florian an honorary yeah. karaoke but yeah. you have to have the 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 yellow blood of the the world <laughs> cup of football in, uh, well, going through your your yeah. veins yeah well so um yeah well we enjoy we'll uh, we enjoy there uh, you know it'll be uh it's a good thing that it doesn't clash with the symposium and uh, and the summit and it's during the night uh, so uh, uh it's a very good thing and uh, uh as a as honorary karaoke i mean the only one that was voted as by the legislator of uh, of the city of rio de janeiro to become a uh, uh, I feel proud to be an honorary citizen of Rio de Janeiro, so I'll uh, I'll have that you know yellow thing there during the night. So the issue is that how long we will be able to to hold uh, during the matches there, and then be sustainable and come up and the next day in the technical and scientific sessions. And I think this is our challenge of sustainability. So basically, we'll have uh, we'll have Ronaldo there, like a you know, like a supporter for us. Very so, good. Very uh, good. You know, it's uh, but uh, you know, uh, we 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 are expecting to have a very good time. It's a top class, um, you know, uh, program. Especially we have, well, let's say we have about 50 medical doctors, most of them from Japan. It, it, uh, it's a very uh, very uh, you know. Uh, strong participation from uh, medical doctors so we are approaching uh, academy of science with academy of medicine so they shouldn't be they shouldn't be separate by the way but that's that's how it is so uh, where everyone is welcome to participate is not a show of some person and the, uh, the others are just spectators 
it is a show of everyone. Show of everyone is invited to present anything they like, they hold dear, any discovery, any any new development, any new technologies, even an experience of uh, of something that does not work. We are open for everything. We don't take part. We don't make. We don't take part in uh, politics. We are neutral. We don't take part in technologies, saying that this technology is better than this or this theory is better than this. Uh, we provide the platform without any censorship, as long as it's science for sure, because it's a scientific, uh, you know, uh, uh, a scientific summit and conference. So everybody is welcome. No, pre uh, no prejudgment of any field or any discovery or any anything. So it's open to anyone and it's open to participate, to be an actor, not a spectator. So SIPS is a party of actors, not partici not, uh, not uh, you know, spectators. So it's still time to uh, to participate, to submit an abstract. This is very strict though. We, have, we are sending the program to, to print, but um, today or tomorrow, but still we can accommodate after and to participate is open, registration is free. Even you can register on site. We don't prefer that because we want to to avoid the crowdy uh, people coming there and registering. But uh, we are open for everything. So we are looking forward to a very excited time uh, honoring Professor Alario Franco, but all other honorees and having nine Nobel laureates, which come there because of specific reasons that you can uh, you can show. And one of the Nobel laureates uh, will speak uh, about something that Dr. Rodrigo Martin spoke today about entrepreneurship, right? Professor yeah. Dan, uh, Shad, Dan Shedman from uh, Israel is going yeah. to talk about this. He, because although he's a, a chemistry Nobel laureate, yeah. he has specialized in entrepreneurship, the, the science of entrepreneurship. Exactly. Yes. Technology and entrepreneurship, not, not in general, what he's yeah, focusing okay. Okay. Entrepreneurship in technology, technological in technology. entrepreneurship, okay. and he considers this is one of key factors in uh, in a peaceful world. Uh, it's a way of keeping more than uh, one or two percent of the scientific world out of the academia, right? Trying to raise the the bar, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, we have, well you've so done we it have with a, the with the framework. Let's try to do with the other. We have things. three categories of Nobel laureates. Nobel laureate in chemistry, Nobel laureate in physics, Nobel laureate in medicine. They are almost one third each are representing the three fields. And you have one in a piece also because uh, Dr. João Ricardo is a uh, doctors without borders and they yes. are Nobel laureate in peace. Exactly. And he's also a politician. Yeah, he's also so here, a politician. Here, here. So Professor Rodriguez is, uh, is in a family of politicians now. So yes, are, very good. So, <laughs> so, so, okay, guys. So, thank so you very you, much for your audience. Uh, just, just a second. Do, are you, are you able to influence uh, your wife' political agenda? No. Uh, oh, I don't hear you. Your okay, microphone you, is what? your microphone, you doctor. No, I said that no, no. No. She is. It's only politics. So, uh, so very, she, uh, she very, influences more. You or you influence is more on the scientific side. No, no, no. We share. No, no. We share. We discuss things, but I don't discuss politics. Politicians. <laughs> very good. Very good. So I mean, next time, next year, probably we should invite her in in Punta Cana or in Panama. Okay. You and her come together. A repeat of Cancun in 2014. Actually, very good. almost 10 years later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. Very yeah. good. And and I yeah. see Professor Martin is much healthier today because in 2014 <laughs> uh, you you lost okay. weight you, you you are correct absolutely absolutely <laughs> so it's Very much good. healthier because that time he she was uh, he, uh, he was a heavyweight okay <laughs> okay well, so okay guys that's it so we are getting yeah. to the end of uh, sips of science I would like to thank everybody for your audience and I would like to. Uh, suggest you also to subscribe to the channel and uh, just uh, get a thumbs up on this video, share it with your friends, especially that one that enjoys science, technology, and the addition of this helping sustainability, helping the, wor uh, the world become a better place. I'm Marvin Nunes. I'm broadcasting from Cabo Frio, Brazil. 
and I'm saying goodbye to Dr. Florian in Montreal, Bye. Canada, and Dr. Rodrigo Martins in Lisbon, Portugal. I'm going to show Pretty a video now. It's a five-minute video, so uh, about why uh, Nobel laureates participate at SIPS. That's it. Next week, uh, we'll see each other on Thursday, 10 p.m. GMT, here with another SIPS of Science. Thank you very much. Global meetings right. are unique in the sense that they combine science, engineering, and fun. Here, they talk science, they talk engineering, they talk technology. And indeed, the very relations between the science, the engineers, and the politicians. That is a framework which is absolutely essential. It's very important for me to understand how interact, let's say, the science with the sustainability and the social responsibility. I really enjoy going to meetings when there are people from various backgrounds and disciplines because I learn a lot and I make a lot of new friends and sometimes we end up working together and collaborating. And when you bring people together with different backgrounds and different interests, you create new technology and directions and that's very important. So I'm in favor of that. I think that's very, very important. And I've had a good time here. I've learned a lot. It's a wonderful, beautiful place, and uh, I will come back the next time, I'm sure. Okay, normally we have uh, scientific conferences just for physicists, and here uh, more engineers are present. And as you pointed out, uh, we have so many problems in the world, and engineers finally need some recognition that they are only possible to solve problems. And since sustainability is one of the focus of this conference, this is a very important topic to be recognized and that also the industry becomes aware about that some business models will not work in the future anymore. You know, here I think uh, I have seen a rather unique way of uh, organizing a meeting, very much uh, at one with the philosophy of the meeting uh, that uh, sustainability is uh, incredibly important uh, for um, the human race in general and pressing away at the importance of having scientists and technologists at the helm. How do we get science and technology into the agenda of our political masters? And science and technology and people who are behind that, they are underappreciated. Your conference is very important in this respect. It was a good reminder that uh, what keeps us going on, why we still didn't destroy the planet, it's science. It's not the design, it's not uh, politicians who created this comfortable community, but science and technology. And SIPS is a reminder for this. And more than that, it was not only interesting to listen to the people, but also to meet them and have private discussions. So we had enough time for private discussion. So I think it was a very good meeting. The dignitaries were more than in past years, more Nobel laureates. So that was a very interesting meeting. And of course, the setting here in Paphos is wonderful. The breadth of the conference, it covers such a wide variety of fields. Often international conferences are, are focused on a few topics and so on. But this covers the gamut, covers a lot of work of industrial interest and work of academic interest. So it's, it's a very broad coverage. And certainly this is a wonderful environment to hold it in. So I think uh, uh, the breadth of the subjects for an international conference is one of the things that stands out. I want to thank you for inviting me, which got me in contact with a new group of people. I think mostly engineers, but also scientists. I was impressed by the high quality of the talks. This is somewhat different because um, in the other organization, I did see more scientists and more decision makers, policy makers. And here, you do have more engineers and more enterprises. And industry people are here. So it's, it's kind of interesting. And I admire you working on the sustainability. Mm -hmm.